Welcome to St. John's, whether you are watching with us live or at your own time. Today we celebrate Pentecost, the arrival of the Holy Spirit as a daily witness and gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. We conclude our series where we have been sharing testimony from our faith community about where we have witnessed God this past year. Whether it is through serving others in our family and home and through loss and hope. Well, on this Pentecost today, we will reflect back on this past year on how St. John's has been a witness to God's love and compassion as we found ways to be a faith community beyond the church building and in new surprising ways. One of those ways is how we have nurtured the kids at St. John's and we will be blessing four who are graduating high school and going off to college. So just a reminder that every Wednesday you can come to be in the sanctuary for some downtime. It is really your space to reset your week by listening to live music and praying in a variety of different ways. So all ages are welcome and there are details about it on our website. Come and join us. Also, thank you all for your generosity. Uh, we raised around $3,000 to go to Habitat for Humanity. We also joined seven other faith communities to help work on an affordable housing project in Daly City. And last Wednesday, I had the honor to bless a new affordable housing project that is happening in Diamond Heights, along with Mayor Breed and Supervisor Mandelman. This is just one of the many ways the Spirit has been moving at St. John's and within our city. And now here are other opportunities, ways that we can live out our faith as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us worship God. Tell the news to each. 
Please join me in the call to worship. Spirit, 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 spirit. The crunch of word, the splash of light, the run of water. Spirit, 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 spirit. The breaking of word, the flow of light, the rush of water. Spirit, 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 spirit. Come, Spirit, scoundrel of grace, invade us and infect us with goosebumps and justice. Come, Spirit, spark in the chaos and unstop our ears to the song in creation. Come, Spirit, rascal of heaven, bring us to the edge of all things created. Come, Spirit of grace. Come, Spirit of life. Come, Spirit of creation. Come now, 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 let us worship God. Let us pray. Holy One, breath of the Big Bang, idea of creation, you who make spring come forth, who make life out of nothing, breathe yourself into us. Create us, you are the flame. We are your light, you are the nerve, we are your muscle. You are the word and we are the story. You are the song, we are the singing. We are the one with you and one with all creation. One spirit, one flesh, many forms. In your spirit, I am we, we are I. Holy one, live in us. We are your body. We remember and we live. Amen.
Today's word comes from the Gospel of John, starting in chapter 15. Listen to God's word. When the companion comes, whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. You will testify too, because you have been with me from the beginning. I didn't say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I go away to the one who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Yet because I have said these things to you, you are filled with sorrow. I assure you that it is better for you that I go away. If I don't go away, the companion won't come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will show the world it was wrong about sin, righteousness, and judgment. He will show the world it was wrong about sin because they don't believe in me. He will show the world it was wrong about righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you won't see me anymore. He will show the world it was wrong about judgment because this world's ruler stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, but you can't handle it now. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He won't speak on his own, but will say whatever he hears and will proclaim to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and proclaim it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That's why I said that the Spirit takes what is mine and will proclaim it to you. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 104. Lord, you have done so many things. You made them all so wisely. The earth is full of your creations. And then there's the sea, wide and deep, with its countless creatures, living things both small and large. There go the ships on it, and Leviathan, which you made, plays in it. All your creations wait for you to give them their food on time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled completely full. But when you hide your face, they're terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you let loose your breath, they are created, and you make the surface of the ground brand new again. Let the Lord's glory last forever. Let the Lord rejoice in all he's made. He has only to look at the earth, and it shakes. God just touches the mountains, and they erupt in smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I'm still alive. Let my praise be pleasing to him. I'm rejoicing in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is probably very fitting that we conclude this part of our series on testimony where we have witnessed God this past year on the day of Pentecost. That in the Gospel of John, we read how Jesus is telling his disciples that when he is no longer with them, he will send them a companion, a spirit that will testify to who Jesus is, give them strength along the journey, and empower them to speak truth while reminding them that they are not alone. This gift is bittersweet because this gift comes with Jesus' farewell speech. He is telling the disciples that soon he will not be with them any longer, but to not feel sorrow because of this gift that they will receive. I can only imagine what it would be like to receive this kind of a gift. It's not exactly the kind of gift that you can see or hold. I mean, how do you wrap the Holy Spirit and what kind of box could possibly contain it? How will this non-touchable and unseen gift provide comfort when Jesus is gone? I was talking with someone this past week as the CDC has been relaxing guidelines on mask wearing, both outdoors and inside. And while it seems that I would readily embrace this news, I found myself clinging to my mask evermore. It's become like a security blanket or comfort item for me. After all, it is what has protected me from the virus this past year. And so even though I find myself still wearing it while outside, I decided that I would try not wearing it while running. 
So I started just by letting my nose peek out and then letting it sit on my chin, then letting it dangle from one ear and eventually holding it in my hand. Sometimes I would even wear it as a bracelet to finally letting it sit in my pocket. This tangible item provided real comfort, comfort against something that I couldn't see or hold. Well, in today's scripture reading, the disciples are faced letting go of the very tangible one who has given them purpose, life, and protection. Now, I invite you to hold this analogy very lightly because I certainly am not preaching for us to all let go of our masks. Instead, I'm inviting us to consider how the Spirit has and continues to move in our lives, even when we cannot embrace it or see it. How the Spirit has enabled us to look back, especially upon this past year, and recognize God's presence in our lives. How the Spirit gives us the words, then, to lay witness and articulate that testimony as we share that story with others so that they, too, may find comfort as well as inspiration to spread that hope and love to the world. This gift, this gift of the companion, truly then is a gift that provides comfort, for it is one who never leaves us and is always with us, whether we know it or not. The Latin root word for companion is com, which means together with, and pani, which means bread. So companion means one who breaks bread with another. First of all, what can be more comforting than bread? And more than that, what is more comforting than someone you can share a meal with and break bread with? This companion is the same spirit that acts as a witness in those moments of God's creation, that acts as a messenger that we are truly God's beloved in baptism, acts as a guide in those moments we are led into temptation, and unites God's people beyond any barriers of language and differences. Caroline Lewis says the primary function of the spirit is to continue the very presence of Jesus. I invite us to listen as John Appleby shares his testimony of where he has witnessed the Spirit move this past year, but also his hopes of where we, St. John's, will allow the Spirit to move us in the future. Based on how I've experienced God in the past year, I think that God is moving this church community to recognize and own and move away from our favorite way to do things. I have slowly become aware for myself how often God has provided for me in order to be able to love someone or take next steps in a way that I know I need to grow. But the provision isn't the way that I imagined it or it's uncomfortable or unfamiliar and it might make me face something about myself that I was hoping, I realized, to move past without really addressing it. It's really easy for me to see this in my work context where I feel much more at home and effective in person. Yet I've had to get work done in ways that feel like a lot more work for a lot less outcome. And it seems like there's a parallel to congregational life here, too, both in worship and the various ministries that St. John's has been called to. We've had to find a way that isn't how we probably would ever have done it if we weren't coping with the circumstances that we've had the last, you know, 14 months and counting. So even though we're going to have the opportunity in the near future, probably, to revert 100% to the way we used to do things, my hope for St. John's is that we won't just do that at the first chance. I want for us to be able to worship together in person. I don't want that to change. But I'm also excited to see how we're going to invest in our community and the community around us in new ways that you know, ways that we might not have imagined before the pandemic. I know that this experience has forced us 
in a lot of really good ways to develop new muscles. And I hope that we really lean into that and um, that you know we will find ways to support Teresa and others in the congregation as they lead, however that might look. Thank you, John, for your words of witness, but also your challenge to us to take this opportunity as a faith community to reflect on what we have learned really this past year and really where we see the Spirit leading us. To do that takes a bit of courage, or actually a lot of courage, to allow ourselves to change and grow and let that sink in in a way that transforms us. Claudio Carvales says, the Spirit will hear our pain, moaning, desperation, and utterances, and will bring it all to God in proper language. The Spirit will testify Jesus to us and hold on to the subversive memory of Jesus. When we then testify about God's glory and justice in Jesus, it is the Spirit working on us. When the Spirit testifies in us, we feel the presence of God and can offer our testimonies on how God acts in us, manifests in the world, transforms people, and brings life where there was only death. And strangely, it is in that powerful way that Claudio describes the Spirit that should give us comfort. Everything about this world that makes the world unjust and uncomfortable, the Spirit will be a disrupting force, and we as God children will lay witness to that in our faith, words, and action. And if we ever doubt, ever doubt the presence of this companion, we only need to look back to this year to see where the Spirit is moving. So I wanna do just that. I want to invite us and end with this prayer and let it be our testimony, St. John's testimony, to God's presence in us, around us, and through us. Let our testimony give us strength to lean into the change that God is doing in our community so that we can carry God's spirit of truth in our neighborhood our city, our world, and our family, and with our loved ones. We pause on this Pentecost day, looking back over this past year, recognizing moments we witnessed God's presence, remembering ways we followed Christ, clinging to where the Spirit moved. We begin with trust, feeling that we are beloved and held by your presence. We begin with hope, knowing that each day can share love, courage, forgiveness, and reconciliation. We recall the last year heavy with loss, for the confidence that has been stripped away, for the shock of emptiness and anxiety and unimagined fears, for the flickers of guilt and kindled regret of all that was left undone, for the strangeness of struggling to understand and struggling to breathe, for the overwhelmness of households that are not okay, for the tolling bells and enumerated candles that barely define the countless heartbreak. One year of Together Apart. May we learn, may we love, may we carry on. God is with us. We recall the last year offering thanks and praise for the chance to focus on what matters to God. We fed your people as we fed each other. We stood alongside your people as we leaned on each other.
we sheltered your people as we protected each other. We raised our voice for your people and prayed in silence. We recall the last year having learned and grown for creativity to meet the challenges. We shared the common bread. We brought joy and treats. We opened our doors and collected prayers of our neighbors. We recall the last year strengthened with hope for the technology that keeps us connected and the science that is leading us forward. We zoomed for worship. We baptized babies. We began to gather in person. Recall the last year as a reset to our life rhythm, for the strength to hold on to blessings and the wisdom to let go of what no longer gives life, for the reminder that to be the church is not to be a club or a building, instead a commitment of practice to embody Christ wherever we are. One year of together apart, may we learn, may we love, may we carry on. God is with us. May we find the wisdom we need in the days of the pandemic that are in front of us. God is with us. May we hear the needs of those around us. Christ is with us. 
May we love the life that we are given. The Spirit is with us. Amen. It is that time of the year where we have the honor of blessing our high school graduates. Today we bless Dominic Basnett, Emma and Jack Cerno, and Brett Woodard. These four have been a joy to watch grow up, and I am grateful that they have allowed all of us to live out our baptismal call of nurturing them in faith and life. So please join me as we bless them on their next adventure. Each one of you is a special part of this faith community. No one else in the whole world is quite like you. We are proud of you and we love you. As a faith community, we want to support you and encourage you along all the ups and downs of this faith journey. We bless you to grow in body, in mind, and in spirit. We bless you to make mistakes and to learn from them, even if the consequences are difficult and painful. We bless you to explore life, to be adventurous in discovering who God has created you to be. And we promise to support you with our love, counsel, and prayers, and continue to walk with you on your faith journey. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the John's 
Words cannot express how blessed I am to be a part of this community. This past year has been evidence to me that Jesus is alive and well, and the Spirit is ever moving. So hear this Pentecost blessing by Walter Bergerman. Spirit, we name you wind, power, force, and then imaginatively third person. We name you and you blow, blow hard, blow cold, blow hot, blow strong, blow gentle, blow new, blowing the world out of nothing to abundance, blowing the church out of despair to new life, blowing little David from shepherd boy to Messiah, blowing to make things new that never were. So blow this day, wind blow here and there, power blow even us, force rush us beyond ourselves, rush us beyond our hopes, rush us beyond our fears until we enact your newness in the world. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Go in peace.